Welcome back, I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we are talking about one of the most interesting GMTs out there, with the Long Jeans Conquest VHP GMT. Now, I don't think a lot of people are going to be interested in buying this one. Higher priced quartz watches typically don't attract a lot of enthusiasts, but I think it's a watch that a lot more people should know about, as VHP stands for very high precision, and there aren't a whole lot of high accuracy quartz watches out there, let alone at this price, and let alone with the GMT. This is a watch I've been interested in since it came out in late 2018. In the early days of the channel, I wound up reviewing another high accuracy quartz watch with the Bull of a Precisionist, and I've been interested in high accuracy ever since. Then, a little while later, I wound up reviewing an homage of the Long Jeans Conquest, and there was something about the design that really just stuck with me. So the Conquest VHP is kind of a combination of two things I've been interested in for a long time. So when I just happened to run across one in mint condition, I jumped on it for a pretty good price. Now a high accuracy quartz watch is exactly what it sounds like. Generally they use a higher grade of crystal, special cuts, and thermoregulation to go above and beyond what a normal quartz movement can do. Generally a decent quartz movement should be within about 15 seconds a month, whereas Long Jean says that their VHP movements should be within 5 seconds a year. So combine that with a perpetual calendar, GMT movement, and Long Jean's best-selling sports watch, and you have the Conquest VHP GMT. Now I'm going to streamline some of this, but even with that, there's a lot to talk about with this one. So let's just get to it. Now the Conquest line as a whole comes in a variety of sizes, but when you're talking specifically about the VHP GMT, you only have a choice between 41 or 43. And I of course went with a smaller 41. Although it is important to note that with this jumbo size crown and these rather blocky crown guards, that does jump out all the way to 45.3. You're also looking at a lug to lug of just under 50, which is a tad longer than I like, as well as a decent thickness of 12.5, and that is from the case spec all the way up to the flat sapphire crystal. Now as a whole, 12.5 millimeters is fairly average, and would be fairly decent if this was an automatic Seiko 5. But we are talking quartz here, as well as a whole other price tier of watches. In fact, the regular automatic conquests are about a millimeter thinner. So I would prefer it if this was a little bit thinner, but I think it is rather forgivable when you consider that there is a lot going on under this dial, as this isn't your average quartz movement. And as for water resistance, we have a stout 50 meters. Yeah. This is by far my biggest disappointment with the watch, and in a lot of ways makes absolutely no sense. And what makes things even more confusing is that the regular Conquest have 300 meters of water resistance, so they should know better. Now some of this may be due to the crown, as it's not directly connected to the movement and is more of a digital interface into it. So maybe they just can't waterproof it as much as they would like. And to be fair, Long Jeans says on their website that their watches with 50 meters are perfectly fine to swim with. And if it is a real true 50 meters, that realistically is okay for most people and most situations. But even with that, this is kind of dumb. I mean, a good travel watch should be one you never have to worry about, and a sports watch is along the same lines. So a sports watch with 50 meters of water resistance just doesn't make any sense. So that's a fairly big negative, but one positive is how the Conquest wears on your wrist. Now it's about 160 grams with its bracelet, so it's not overly heavy, but you definitely know you're wearing it. And in sort of a good way. For its size, it has a really solid and well-made feel to it. Although that weight also results in it being slightly top-heavy as well. So if you do tend to wear your watches a little bit loose, this will shift around a bit. And since the bracelet has a butterfly clasp, there aren't any micro-adjusts. So you may have to wear this just a little bit loose. Which for me is fine, and actually how I wear watches during the summer heat anyways. However, despite all of that, I found it pretty comfortable on my wrist. The lug to lug is a little longer than I prefer, yet the female end links and how they're cut go a long way to make up for that. On your wrist it might be a little different, but on my 7 and a quarter inch wrist it conforms nicely to the natural curvature. It's still a little top heavy, and a little weighty, but overall pretty comfortable. Which also shows that this has a rather big presence for its size, and in many ways it reminds me more of a diver than anything else. Let's move on to the movement, which is one of the more interesting aspects of the VHP line. 
And there's a bit to unpack here. Now, it's officially known as Caliber L287, and it is a thermoregulated system, which allows it to maintain an accuracy of within five seconds a year, which may not sound like a lot, but that's kind of a big deal, as there's a lot of technology and engineering that went in this to actually make that happen. And in the six months I've had this, it's only gained a second, so I'd say that's pretty realistic. One thing I want to point out here is that the crown doesn't act like a normal crown, and they refer to it as a smart crown. It basically acts as a digital interface into the functionality of the watch, which is kind of similar to what I've seen from some of Citizen's perpetual calendars. However, while those citizens are notoriously complicated, Longjeans did a fantastic job streamlining how you interface with the watch, and I think you'll see that as we go through. With this version, the big thing is the GMT functionality, of which people always want to know what kind of GMT it is. Whether it's a caller's GMT that you can independently adjust the GMT hand, or a traveler's GMT with a jumping hour. Well, it's neither, and kind of both at the same time. Which sounds more confusing than it is. But basically, the watch has two different modes. You have a home and a travel mode. In each mode, the hour and minute hand keep track of the time as you would expect, where the GMT hand then shows you the time of the other mode. To adjust one, you just adjust it as you normally would while you're in that mode. If you look at the upper end of the dial, you'll see a little small house and a small plane. If you want to know what mode you're in, you just press the crown in once. Then the second hand automatically goes to indicate which you're at. If you want to switch modes, then you quickly press the crown twice, and everything will adjust. And adjust rather quickly. So the easiest way to think about this is that in home mode, it acts like a caller's GMT, while in travel mode, it acts like a traveler's. And one thing I really like here is just how lightning fast these hands move when it switches around. Whatever little actuators or motors they're using in here are quite remarkable. With the GMT version, there are two ways to set the watch. The first is to use the crown like you would with any other watch, and the second is to use an app. The app itself is fairly simple and straightforward. It basically asks you what locations you want to set for both your home and travel times. Then it just sends it to the watch. Although what's interesting is that Long Jeans decided to go a little old school here, and it doesn't use Bluetooth like some Casios. Now, if you look really closely at the 12, you'll notice a little light sensor embedded in it. So your phone or tablet then sends information across by using the light on your phone to send it over in a series of flashes. Now, on one hand, the technophile in me thinks this is completely stupid and gives me flashbacks to the late 90s, where I'm trying to line up two Palm Pilots just to beam information across. Yet oftentimes the best solution is the most simplest, and there is a sort of elegant simplicity here. If you think about it, Long Jeans is trying to make a watch that you could enjoy for decades, and who knows what's going to happen to Bluetooth technology in that period of time. Ten years from now, we might be using something completely different that isn't compatible. So this is their way of future-proofing the watch by sort of going with retro technology. And in that regard, it is potentially genius. But notice I said potentially, because I think there is a flaw here. The problem is that no matter what interface you're using to get the information to the watch, you're still relying on a phone or tablet app to get that information across. And apps, even if it's something as simple as turning on and off a light, need to be constantly updated. So in order for this to really be reliable, they need to stay on that. And unfortunately, they've already failed at this, as there are already a number of phones that aren't compatible with their app. Now, if you have an iPhone or a Galaxy, you're probably good to go. Anything else, and it's going to be hit or miss. And my phone is a Google Pixel, and unfortunately, it's not compatible. So I could still download the app, but it would never work. Luckily, though, I have an iPad, and it works fine with that. So I still got to use it and try it out. And I gotta say, when the app works, it works and works beautifully. It's nice and simple and easy to use. But this technology is exclusive to the GMT version. And unless these start selling like hotcakes, I can't really see long jeans in the long run wanting to invest a lot of time and money in keeping that app updated. So the clock may be ticking on this functionality. Another interesting feature is what they call the GPD, or Gear Position Detection System, which is basically there to recalibrate the hand position to exactly where they're supposed to be. And it does this automatically every couple of days, as well as if it actually senses a physical or magnetic shock to the system. So if something does mess up the positioning of the hands, it should have the ability to rectify itself. 
Now, no matter how much we may want this to, it doesn't guarantee perfect alignment with the indices. What it does is reposition the hands to exactly where they were installed. So if they were installed a little bit off, it's going to recalibrate it right back to that position. So even at this price range, there's no guarantee of a perfectly lined up second hand. This one is close, but I did notice that there's a few spots where it's off. And I know for some that this is going to be an outrage, which is why I'm actually pointing it out. But for me, it's good enough. I've seen so many second hands that are misaligned, I've just stopped worrying about it. In fact, it's more rarity when I see one that is perfectly lined up. So we can talk about this down below, but for now, let's move on. And one of the other big features here is the perpetual calendar. And I have to say that this is one of the easiest perpetual calendars I've ever had to set up because I didn't actually have to set it up. In my experience, perpetual calendars are notoriously difficult, but Longines did something ingenious here. Before the watch is boxed up, Longines actually sets it to the proper date and time in Switzerland. Then they pull the crown out to put the watch into a hibernation state. So it's still keeping track of the date and time internally, but the hands aren't moving just to save power. Then when you get it, you just wake it up and adjust it to your current time zone. And that's it. No muss, no fuss, you're just good to go. In fact, even this last spring, the Conquest automatically adjusted itself for daylight savings time, which I wasn't expecting and was a very nice pleasant surprise, and goes to show you that this is even more of a set it and forget it kind of system. Although at this point, I'm sure some of you are thinking, you know, that's all fine and dandy, but what happens when the battery dies? I'm sure at that point, it's still a pain to set up. And you're probably right, especially because the manual doesn't even go in how to do this, which means if it's completely dead, you might have to ship this back to Longines to set up. And that is a pretty big negative in my book. However, Longines still did something pretty smart here as well, as they gave the movement its own internal power reserve just to keep things running and maintain the settings while you're changing the battery. So as long as you do that in a reasonable amount of time, you should be fine. Now, battery life is supposed to be around four to five years, depending on use. When the watch starts to sense that the battery is getting low, it enters into what's called an end of life phase, which is where the second hand only jumps five seconds at a time. And that's nothing new. A lot of other quartz watches have had something similar to indicate a low battery. However, the conquest goes a step further here. After about six months of that end of life phase, it then enters another one called end of energy phase. And that's basically where the watch goes into hibernation, and the hands all rotate up to the 12 o'clock position. So when it is finally time to change out the battery, you actually get a year's worth of notice before you're really up the creek. Now, when it comes time to actually change out the battery, I didn't see anything that said you shouldn't do it yourself. However, I did run across a number of forum posts from other Conquest owners, and they all highly suggest you take this back to long jeans and let them do it. The prevailing theory is that the movement is rather sensitive and rather picky, and it's just not worth risking it by doing it yourself. And if that is true, then that is another big negative against this watch, at least compared to other quartz watches. I mean, one of the big benefits of a nice quartz watch is that you don't have to have it serviced every four to five years. Now, as a watch geek and kind of a technophile, I'm amazed at this movement. Not only with its accuracy, but its ease of use. Long Jeans really has made a true set it and forget it kind of system here, and one that could not only appeal to watch geeks, but also regular people, as this could be a perfect travel watch for someone that doesn't want to have an automatic movement. But as amazing as this is, the old school computer geek in me can't help but see some PC versus Mac parallels. And to Long Jeans' credit, I think they really have pulled an apple here. People love Macs because of the streamlined user experience. Apple handles all the heavy lifting in the background so that their Macs just work. However, all of that comes at a cost, as you're much more reliant on Apple to maintain and fix things, which for most people is just fine. But if you're a hardcore PC user, this is extremely frustrating, as they're used to doing things themselves and doing things their own way. And with a Mac, hardcore PC guys often feel like they don't have full control over their own system. And I think that's going to be the same case here with the Conquest. Some people are going to flat out love it for its ease of use, while others will be frustrated at just how much they're still tied to long jeans. Now, that about covers the functionality aspect, so let's shift gears more towards form or the aesthetics of the Conquest VHB line, which should be similar but not quite the same as the regular Conquest. 
Now, for a 41 millimeter, this has a rather beefy and substantial presence. One look and you know it's not a dress watch. There's no polished chamfered edges or any sort of fancy casework leading up to the crystal. What you do have, however, is a nice satin brushed finish, a polished eye-catching bezel, and a very curvy midline. In fact, the entire case has a nice organic flowing curviness to it. Although, having a sidewall like this that goes straight up does make it look a little taller than it actually is. Now, flipping the watch over, you can see that it has a nicely embossed case back, and especially for a brand name watch. This is more something I've come to expect from micro brands, and kind of what you'd expect from a Thule tool watch. Overall, it is a nice cohesive design for the case, one that isn't flashy, yet still maintains a notable presence that flows together nicely. The only odd spot I think is with the crown and the crown guards. The crown is substantial and rather easy to use. Its design is one of the key characteristics of the Conquest line. Yet rather than the triangle-shaped, more traditional crown guards for the Conquest, they went with these rather blocky ones. Kind of like someone had a few extra Legos and then just decided to slap them on the side of the case. Now these are a little more boxier than I prefer, and it's kind of an odd departure and distraction from the rest of the case design, as this is one of the few areas with a sharp right angle, and that angle is something you feel as you try to rotate the crown. Now, Long Jeans decided to use a rather interesting dial texture for the VHP line, one that has these circular grooves emanating out from the center. In real life, this looks fantastic, but these are a pain to photograph, and especially on these macro shots. Zoomed in this close, everything just looks way too grainy. However, rest assured that at arm's length, these look much nicer, as they have a nice textured sunburst effect on a dark blue dial. The overall dial design is straight conquest, Arabic's at the 12 and 6, and you have a date at the 3, as well as thin wedges for the rest of the indices. Now, some people don't like this mixture of Arabic's and wedges, but it is one thing that initially attracted me to the line, as well as one of the things that I loved about the Orient Mako. Now, the indices are applied, with the 12 and 6 having a flatter and much more reflective metallic surface, whereas the rectangular wedges have these taller metallic sides, but then drop down slightly to the loom that sits in between, making them look kind of like little loomed Oreos. In the sense of depth from all these different layers, as well as the groove texture on the dial, is one thing that I really love about this design. As well as the red highlights on the chapter ring, GMT, and second hand. It adds just enough color to make things more interesting, but not so much that it ever becomes a distraction. Then, topping everything off, we have a curved black chapter ring with 24-hour indicators, which is there for the GMT hand, as well as it nicely matches the black date wheel. One thing I also liked is how the reflective 12 and 6 seem to match the reflective Long Jeans logo, and that just creates a nice flow and sense of symmetry down the center line of the dial. Now, overall, I really like this dial design. The hands are a perfect length and stand out nicely against the blue textured backdrop. And by moving the GMT scale to the raised chapter ring, it effectively separates out the 24-hour scale from the regular 12-hour scale on the center dial which makes this one of the easiest to read GMTs I've seen. There's a lot of visually interesting elements on this dial, yet it still maintains a clean functional flow. The only aspect I really don't like is the red house and plane on the upper half of the dial, which only exists on the VHP GMT line, so all the other conquests don't have this. It's a bit distracting and kind of odd when you first notice them. However, they do serve a rather important functional purpose. So I can forgive him for that. Now, as far as the loom goes, it's pretty good. And unlike my Hamilton Intramatic, it's what I was expecting in this price range. The overall design isn't fairly impressive, but it does have some decent staying power for a sports watch. The dial fades out a little quick, but the hands stay in it. And they last just a smidge longer than my Seiko Turtle. So considering that this isn't a diver, I'm pretty happy with it. Which leads us to the bracelet, something I'm also pretty happy with. Just like the watch head, it's not fancy or flashy. Yet the satin brushed finishing is great, and it still maintains a nice presence. One that's more about getting down to business than, say, being seen. And like I said before, the fully articulating female end links make up for that longer lug to lug. Without that feature, I think this watch wouldn't be near as comfortable as it is. Overall, it's a great bracelet. But one thing I'm not a fan of is the butterfly clasp. The bracelet does come with some half links just to help you get a better fit, but I think it'd be much easier with micro adjusts. 
Generally, I'm not a fan of butterfly clasps. After about half a day, I always find them rather annoying, as the clasp part seems to just be digging into the bottom of my wrist. Yet, for whatever reason, I really didn't mind this one from Long Jeans. I'm not sure if it's the placement, or maybe it's just a little bit thinner, but I didn't mind this one at all. With regard to value, there are two sides to this analysis. The first is to look at the watch in relation to other high accuracy quartz pieces out there. Now MSRP is about 1300 bucks, but you can find these on the gray market for a grand, and about 600 to 700 bucks for the non-GMT version. And in that regard, there is a ton of value here, as most other high accuracy quartz watches are going to be starting around two to three thousand dollars. The only other option that I know of that even comes close is the Bulova Precisionist line, which can usually be found for a little bit less. Now the Precisionists are amazing in their own right, and they have one of the smoothest sweeping second hands I've seen. But unfortunately, all the ones that I know of are on the larger side, and we're talking 44 and a half to 46 and a half millimeters. So if you're looking for something more reasonably sized and relatively reasonably priced, long jeans pretty much it. And I think the non-GMT versions are especially attractive for those who are really interested in high accuracy quartz pieces. However, the other side of this coin is the idea that in today's very connected world, do you even need a watch like this? If you must have something that's always accurate, you might be better off getting something with multiband, Bluetooth, or even something that can pick up a GPS satellite to set itself to, as there are plenty of watches out there that can do at least one of those for a fraction of the cost. And you don't have to go crazy looking or full plastic to get there either. If you want something with a nice simple elegance, there's always the Casio Oceanus line. So in that regard, if all you're looking for is a set it and forget it, always accurate watch, there are cheaper options out there, assuming you're in an area where those technologies can be used. If you're out in the middle of the ocean, then you're pretty much out of luck. So value really depends on what you're interested in. And for me personally, I really appreciate the science and engineering that went into making a watch like this which is why I wanted to look at it in the first place. Yet beyond the technology, I still really like and enjoy this watch. Honestly, I'm not sure if I love it, but I definitely like it. It's comfortable, reliable, easy to read, and looks great. With a perpetual calendar and the ability to adapt to daylight savings, it really is a set it and forget it kind of watch. Now, there are definitely some things here I would change if I could, but nothing for me personally that I would say is a deal killer. Although, at the same time, this isn't a watch I would wholeheartedly recommend. But if you are intrigued by it, it is one that I would say take a good hard long look at. Since I already own it and I do enjoy wearing it, for me, for right now, I would say it's a keeper. But if I am being perfectly honest, I might wind up reevaluating that after I spend more time with the Oceanus. Anyway, that's my take on the Long Jeans Conquest VHP GMT. A mouthful to say for sure. But let me know yours down below, as well as what do you think about high accuracy quartz versus, say, more connected pieces. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.